Hello everyone, this is week nine, day one solution problem one. At some moment, Jim and Ben sat on the carousel as in the picture. The carousel turned, moving Ben to the place where previous Jim was. At that moment, where was Jim? So if the carousel is turning to move Ben to Jim's current place, then all we have to do is figure out the movements that Ben did. Let's count them out. One, two, three, four. So it takes Ben four movements to get to Jim's place. And at that same time, where is Jim when he does four of that same rotations? One, two, three, four. So when Ben is at the previous place of Jim, Jim should be right here and Ben should be right here. So let's see at the bottom which picture represents the one that we just drew on the top. And as we can see, number A should be the correct answer because this perfectly matches that Jim is here and on top we drew that Jim is here. Problem two, four monkeys A, B, C, D are eating apples. A eats more than B, B eats more than C, and D eats more than A. Please rank these four monkeys in the increasing order of the numbers of apples each one eats. We're gonna use two signs. The greater sign, which means that they consume more apples, and the second sign, less than, which means that they consume less apples. First of all, we know that A eats more than B, so A should be greater than B. But then B eats more than C, so B should be greater than C. And finally, D eats more than A. So this time A should be less than D, and D should be greater than A. So this should be the increasing order of the number of apples each one eats. Problem three, there are three red balls and three blue balls in the bag. Jerry closed his eyes and picked a number of balls from the bag. What is the least number of balls that Jerry needed to pick in order to ensure that he got at least one red ball and one blue ball? In the worst case, he picks whatever balls and he picks all red balls and he picked three times. And the next time, he can't pick another red ball because there's only three red balls. So on the fourth time, he's guaranteed to pull a blue ball. So that brings us to four times. And four times is the least that Jerry needs to pick in order to ensure that he got at least one red ball and one blue ball because there's only three red balls or three blue balls. So four times is your answer for problem three. And finally, problem four. A, B, and C are three siblings. One day, one of them broke a bottle when they were playing hide and seek. A said, B broke it, but B said, I didn't do it. And C said that he did not do it either. So if only one of them told the truth, who broke the bottle? Of course, there's three cases. So let's write out case one. If A broke it, then that would mean that both B and C told the truth. And we know that this is impossible since only one of them told the truth. So therefore, A did not break it. Case two. B broke it. Well, if B broke it, then that just means that both A and C both told the truth. And we know that this is also impossible because only one of them told the truth. So case two is out and B did not break it. So that only leaves us with one more possibility, and that's case three in which C breaks it. Well, let's double check to see if case three is our answer. Well, if C breaks it, then both C and A lie. Because if C broke it, then he lies, and both A lies, because B did not break it if C broke it. So therefore, C and A lie. Well, this is perfect because only one of them told the truth, which is B. So therefore, our answer should be case three in which C breaks the bottle. So C breaks the bottle. This is week nine, day two. Problem one, a PE teacher gave three balls, blue, red, and green to three kids, A, B, and C. Each kid got one ball. If A didn't get a blue or a red ball and B didn't get a red ball, figure out which balls these three kids got respectfully. 
So in total, we are given the colors blue, red, and green. And if A didn't get a blue or red ball, then A for sure got a green one because that's the only choice left. And if B didn't get a red ball, then B must have gotten a blue ball. Since he didn't get a red ball and green is already taken, so B must have gotten a blue ball. And figure out which balls these three kids got respectfully. Well, we know that C, of course, got red because that's the only color left. So in total, A got green, B got blue, and C got red. Problem two. In Baby Roo's house, each room is connected to any neighboring room by a door. Baby Roo wants to get from the room A to the room B. What is the least number of doors that he'll need to go through? So a door is basically just like this. There's an opening like this, like this. So that's just a door. Now we try to find the least number of doors that he'll need to go through. Well, all you have to do is sort of play around with the picture and eventually you'll get something like this. Baby Roo will first go through this door. That's one door. And then go up two doors and then go up three doors. And finally, go through here, four doors. So what is the least number of doors that he won't need to go through? The answer is four doors is the least for problem two. Problem three. Three friends, Benjamin, Henry, and Ryan, were playing with three balls, two red and one blue. After a little while, Henry proposed to play a game. He told Benjamin and Ryan to stand back to back. Then he gave a red ball to Benjamin and a blue ball to Ryan. Henry hit the remaining ball behind him. Henry then asked Benjamin and Ryan to guess the color of the ball in his hand. If Benjamin and Ryan could only see their own ball, who can surely guess right? Of course, we have to see what color of ball that each person has. Well, let's first see here at Benjamin's ball. Benjamin's ball is a red ball. So if he has a red ball and could only see its own ball, then he can't tell for sure if Henry has a blue one or a red one, since those are the two that's left. So he can't be 100% sure. But if it's Ryan, because he has a blue ball, then he can know for sure that Henry has a red ball because that's the only color that's left between Benjamin and Henry. So if Benjamin and Ryan could only see their own ball, who can surely guess right? Well, Ryan can surely guess right because he has a blue ball. And finally, problem four. Abby, Brett, Carl, and Dana are seated in a row of four seats, number one to number four. Joe looks at them and says, Brett is next to Carl. Abby is between Brett and Carl. However, each one of Joe's statement is false. Brett is actually sitting in seat three. Then who is sitting in seat two? So if Brett is actually sitting in seat three, so B is for Brett, and Carl does not sit next to Brett because that's right here, then Brett must sit at number one. Then Carl must sit at number one. And if Abby is not between Brett and Carl, then Abby cannot sit at number two, and therefore Abby sits at number four. And what we're left with is Dana, who sits at number two. So who sits in seat two? Dana does. Problem one. I met two people, Adam and Bob. One of them was from city A, whose residents always lied. The other one was from city B, whose residents could either lie or sometimes tell the truth. Adam said, I was from city A. And Bob said, I was from City B. So who is from City A? So let's start off with Adam. We know that he cannot be from City A because otherwise he would be telling the truth. So therefore, we know that Adam is not from City A or otherwise he would be telling the truth. So that leaves us with Bob. And we know that Bob is from City A because Adam is not from City A. And it also tells us that he could sometimes lie or tell the truth. And this time we know that he's telling a lie. So therefore, Bob is from City A. And Adam is from City B. So the answer is that Bob is from City A. Problem two. There are seven number cards labeled 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12, and 13. Each of three kids, A, B, and C, took two cards. And after they took two cards, there was one card left. A said, my two cards added up to 11. B said, my two numbers added up to 12. And C said, my two numbers added up to 19. Which number card was left? So let's start with the cases of A. Well, let's look at the cards. We can slightly play around with numbers and we'll eventually get two solutions. Either it's eight plus 
3, which gives us 11, or 5 plus 6, which also gives us 11. And let's move on to B. B says my two numbers added up to 12. Well, there's pretty much one solution. So it's just 8. No, no, actually, it's just 7 and 5. And that gives us 12. Well, the above picture, we already see that 5 was used above. So therefore, we need to cross out the 5 above. And that leaves us with A, which is 8 plus 3. And moving on to C, it says, my two numbers added up to 19. Well, there's two solutions for this. One, it's 12 and 7. Or it's 6 and 13. And since we see that the 7 is already used for B, then we need to cross out the 12 and 7 below. And that leaves us with C, which is 6 plus 13. So now let's cross out the numbers that we've used. We've used 3. We've used 8. We've used 7. We've used 5. We've used 6. And we've used 13. So therefore, the only number that's left is 12. So 12 was a number card that was left. Problem 3. On these scales, two of the cubes balance with three of the balls. How many cubes needed to be added to the right-hand side to make the scales balance? So first of all, we know that two of the cubes balance with three of the balls. So this should be three of the balls. So we can cross three of the balls out. And after, this is still not balanced, so we need to add another two cubes, and we can cross another three balls out. And we can add another two cubes and cross another three out, add two more cubes, cross another three out, and finally add two another cubes and cross three out. And therefore, that makes it balanced because we crossed out all of the balls. So let's count how many of the cubes we added. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So therefore the answer is eight. We needed to add eight more cubes to make the scales balance. Finally, problem four. Six faces of a cube are painted with different colors, black, blue, green, red, yellow, and white. The following are pictures of the cube from different angles. Which color is on the opposite face of the red one? Which color is on the opposite face of the green one? So we know that the black is next to both the yellow and the green. Black should go right here. And we also know from the second picture that the blue is touching the yellow. And since we have two spaces left, we know that blue cannot be at the bottom since blue should be attached to yellow. So therefore, we know that blue should go right here. And just to clarify, the bottom is the white because that's the only color left. So which color is on the opposite face of the red one? Well, we can see that it's black is opposite of the red one. And which color is on the opposite face of the green face? That's blue. So therefore, black and blue are your two answers. This is week nine, day four. Problem one, mom gave three balls, red, white, and blue, to three siblings, A, B, and C. Each person got one ball. A said, I didn't get the blue ball. B said, I didn't get the white ball. C said, mom gave blue and red balls to my sister and brother. Please figure out which ball did each sibling get respectfully. Right off the bat, we know that C must have gotten white because C said that mom gave blue and red balls to my siblings. So red is the only option left. And if B said, I didn't get the white ball, this is not enough information. So we need to keep on going. However, when we get to A, we figure out enough information that A did not get the blue ball, which means that A must have gotten the red ball since white is already taken and blue can't be A since A said that he did not get the blue ball. And this leaves us with B and B must have gotten the blue ball. So in total, A got the red ball, B got the blue ball, and C got the white ball. Problem two, four giraffes A, B, C, and D line up as following, not necessarily in alphabetical order. A is taller than B, C is taller than A, then A is shorter than D. Put letters A, B, C, D on corresponding giraffes. 
we can use our handy dandy greater sign and less sign. First of all, we know that A is taller than B, so A is greater than B. C is taller than A, however, so C is greater than A, it should go like this. And C is taller than A and is shorter than D, so C should be shorter than D. As right here, we can line them up as following. D, C, A, B. Just like what we just did above. So this is what you should have gotten. D is greater than C, C is greater than A, and A is greater than B. Problem three. The students in Mr. Day's class were asked the color of their sun hat. The results are shown in the graph below. Mr. Day chooses two colors, which include the hat colors of exactly half of the class. Which two colors does he choose? Each kid has one sun hat. Hint, first figure out the total number of kids in his class. So let's look at the bar graph. Let's first figure out the number of kids that chose red. We see that there's three people since the top is at the three. And for orange, we know that's six because the top is at the six. Black is at two, green is at one, and yellow is at four. So in total, we can add these numbers together. Three plus six plus two plus one plus four gives us 16 people in his class. Okay, and it says that chooses two colors, which includes the hat, colors of exactly half of the class. So half of 16, we just divide it by two, which is eight. So half of the class should be eight because eight plus eight is 16. So half should be eight. And which two colors does he choose? Well, we need two colors that when added up equals to eight. And that, and we see here, well, that is just like orange and black because six plus two gives us eight. So he chose orange plus black. Problem four, five dragons named Dodo, Pee Pee, Richie, Burrow, and Fifi live each in his own cave. Dodo and Pee Pee have only one neighbor. Richie lived in the cave with a triangle. Burrow didn't have a tree in front of his cave. Pee Pee lived next to Burrow. Which cave did Fifi live in? We know that Dodo and Pee, Pee has only one neighbor, so it has to be one on the side because they don't have another neighbor on their opposite side. So this is either Dodo or Pee, Pee and this is either Dodo or Pee, Pee. Next information is that Richie lived in a cave with a triangle, so this must be Richie since it has a triangle right here. And Burrow didn't have a tree in front of his cave, so it must, Burrow must have lived here since this cave has a tree, but this cave doesn't, and it says that Burrow didn't have a tree in front of his cave. And it says PP lived next to Burrow. So after given this information, we know that this house belongs to PP, and this house belongs to Dodo. And finally, which cave did Fifi live in? Well, there's only one cave basically left, so therefore, we know that this cave should belong to Fifi, the yellow cave with the tree. Let's start off with problem one. Father hangs the laundry outside on a clothesline. He wants to use as few pegs as possible. For three towels, he needs four pegs as shown. So how many pegs does he need for nine towels? Well, let's draw out the towels first so we can see how many pegs he needs to use. And we need to count carefully until we get to nine. All right, there we go. That is nine towels. Now let's count up how many pegs they need to hang up. Well, we know that two towels share one, but once you get to the side, then each peg has their own because they don't have any neighboring towels. So this guy shares his own, these two share, 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 and this one gets his own. And now let's count up how many pegs we have used. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So we use 10 pegs in total. And 10 pegs is the least amount of pegs that you will use for nine towels. Problem two, a lily pad in a pond doubles in size every day. After 10 days, it covers the entire pond. After how many days does it cover half the pond? So here is the pond when it covers half. And after one day, it turns into this. The lily pad covers all the pond. And this takes 10 days. So let's just go back one day, which is 10 days subtracted by one day, which is nine days. And that's when it increases half the size of lily pad pond. So when it's nine days, the lily pad has covered half the pond. Problem three, in this diagram, 11 matches make three squares. Your challenge is to move three matches to show two squares. What we are going to do is move these two matches down to make this like that. And then we're also going to move this match right here like that. So this is now hollow and one big square. And there we go. We just made two squares by moving three matches. One square, two square. Finally, problem four. Nathan has five sport activities. One day for soccer, one day for swimming, one day for fencing, and two days for basketball. Every week from Monday to Friday. We know that he plays basketball on two days that are one day apart. The day that he swims is next to a day that he plays basketball. And finally, he swims on Friday and does not do ball activities on Wednesday. Which day does Nathan play soccer? So just to clarify, ball activities means soccer and basketball. Okay, now let's move on. Let's look at the third piece of information first. It says that he swims on Friday and does not do ball activities on Wednesday. So let's draw a graph of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it says that he swims on Friday. And that he does not do any ball activities on Wednesday, which cancels out the possibility of him playing basketball and soccer on Wednesday. And the only sport that's left is fencing because we already used swimming. So therefore we know that he does fencing on Wednesday. And then let's move on to number one because that's the second most important piece of information. He plays basketball on two days that are one day apart. Well, we know that he cannot play basketball on both Monday and Wednesday because Wednesday is already taken by fencing. So therefore, the days that he plays basketball must be Tuesday and Thursday because they're one day apart and no sport has been taken by these two. So therefore, we know that he plays basketball on Tuesday and basketball on Thursday as well. And then finally, we're left with Monday and the only sport that hasn't been used is soccer. So we know that he plays soccer on Monday. So Monday is your answer.